Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. If there's something you guys want us to react to, drop the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to react to it. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook as Fanny and Jesse, and just feel free to hit us up. We'll be more than glad to chat with you guys so today i'm going to be reacting to big time from allah that you are going to uh jenna so without wasting time let's get into the video brothers and sisters it is important for us as we are witnessing mortality the way that we are witnessing it today and witnessing the amount of janazas that we are witnessing today for us to remember something very important that while we ask allah for husn al khitam for a good ending, that it would be unreasonable to ask Allah for a good death if you're not living a good life. Essentially what you want to do with yourself is put yourself in a position where the majority of your time is spent in a way that you would want the angel of death to meet you, and all of your time is spent in a way that you are taking into consideration that the angel of death may meet you at any time. And what that means is Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala divides them into, do, into two, is that the majority of your time, as much as possible, is spent in actions that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And none of your time is spent in actions that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, make as much of your time as possible a way that you would be happy if the angel of death showed up to you right now and you would say, Alhamdulillah, I'm ready. I was in a state of listening to something good, reciting something good, doing something good. I was doing something that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I want to meet my Lord with. And the believer is never heedless to a point that they engage themselves in that which they would be afraid to meet the angel of death with and hence meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And, and so you see these beautiful narrations of Husn al-Khitam, of a good ending from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and throughout our history, stories of scholars that died saying La ilaha illallah. Why? Because they lived saying La ilaha illallah. Stories of people that died in their sujood, in their prostration. Why? Because they exerted themselves towards prostration all the time. That's not a person who was doing sajda like the pecking of a rooster. That is a person who used to take their sujood seriously, who used to go to their sajda with a special longing for Allah, and Allah gifted them with that ending. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who died reciting the Qur'an, reciting, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ The verse in Surah Al-Baqarah was someone that was distinguished by reciting the Qur'an in its entirety on a regular basis, on a daily basis. And so Allah allowed him to be met with death at that moment. And there is a beautiful narration I came across that I wanted to share today in that regard about the state of our hearts when death meets us. And it's a narration that's narrated in Al-Hakim by Fatima bint Hussein ibn Ali. So this is the great granddaughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fatima, the daughter of Ali, who is the son of Ali and Fatima, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all, who narrates on behalf of our mother, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, qalat kana Usaid ibn Hudayr min afadil nas that Usaid ibn Hudayr, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu one of the earliest Ansar of Medina, who came to Mecca to embrace Islam early on in Bay'at al-Aqaba, that he was from the best of all people. And he used to say, فَكَانِ يَقُولُ لَوْ أَنِّي أَكُونُ كَمَا أَكُونُ مَحَلَّ حَالٍ مِّنْ أَحْوَالِ ثَلَاثِ If I was to be in any one of these three states, if I was to be in any one of these three states, لَكُنْتُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَا شَكَكْتُ فِي ذَلِكَ I know that I would be from the people of paradise. No doubt about it. If I was to die, in one of these three states, I would know that I am from the people of Jannah, and I would have no doubt about it. He said, "Hina aqra'u al-Qur'an wa hina asma'u." The moments that I'm reading the Qur'an or listening to the Qur'an. This is not reading the Qur'an and listening to the Qur'an while scrolling through your apps or having a bunch of background noise going on, or you know, just having it somewhere in the background. No. 
قراءة القرآن بالتدبر والتفكر to sit down and to recite the Quran with contemplation and introspection Dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan is only three months away Allahumma balighna Ramadan, Allahumma ameen And with the time that we have, we should push ourselves to do more than one khatam of Quran and Ramadan, a full recitation of Quran and Ramadan Why not divide it from now and say I'm going to do 10 juz for the next three months so that I have a khatam to welcome Ramadan as well Take time to read the Qur'an, a daily portion of your time. And tell me what the state of your heart is when you're reading the Qur'an and there are no distractions. Tell me how your heart is like when you're listening to a beautiful recitation of the Qur'an and there are so many beautiful qira'at now that you can press play and be moved, your heart immediately moved and stunned by the recitation of the Qur'an. How much of that is your life? So that's his first state. He said the second one, وَإِذَا سَمِعْتُ خُطْبَةَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. When I listen to the khutbah, the sermons of the Prophet wasallam. Now obviously, we don't have the blessing of living amongst the Prophet wasallam. I want you to think about the most righteous person you have ever been around. And of course, only Allah knows the hearts. But you were around someone who you knew had a particular state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A righteous scholar or a righteous worshipper Someone that's distinguished with their ilm or their ibadah Their knowledge or their worship And you spent some time with them What was the state of your heart like? How was your iman in those moments? How was your iman in those moments? Your faith in those moments when you had righteous companionship? As Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah used to say أُحِبُّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِيًا أَنَالَ بِهِمْ شَفَاعَةً said, I love the righteous, though I don't consider myself amongst them because maybe I'll gain their intercession. They'll rub off on me. My iman raises in the presence of certain people and I might gain their intercession. Imagine what it was like to be around the Prophet ﷺ. The state of a person's iman, sitting with the Prophet ﷺ, listening to the khutbahs of the Prophet ﷺ. So part of this is his presence alayhi salatu wasalam. That is unmatched in any way whatsoever. The Sahaba would fear hypocrisy because when they were with him, where were they? Hamdullah radiallahu anhu. And then Abu Bakr saying, Nafaqa Abi Bakr, that Abu Bakr became a hypocrite. Hamdullah became a hypocrite. Why? Because when we're with the Prophet, وسلم, our iman is here. And we can't sustain that when we're away from him. But that's not normal to sustain that anyway Because if you were like that, you'd basically be an angel You can't But that's the presence of a righteous person amongst you And who more righteous and whose intercession is more sought Than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam But then listening to his words Alayhi Salatu Wasallam The effect when you sit down and you listen to the Yad Salihin Which we recite on, normal, on a normal basis, on a nightly basis, Shaykh Yasir Burjas goes over Riyadh al-Salihin Listening to the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As Imam ibn Abi Jamra has in his Muhtasar of al-Bukhari In his summary of the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari A history of scholars that would read Sahih al-Bukhari from cover to cover In hard times As a means of lifting a hardship May Allah bless Shaykh Amin and the brothers at Dar al-Qasim the scholars in Chicago, when the pandemic started, they recited Al-Bukhari from start to finish because it's the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and reading them brings about a peace of heart and a stillness around you. So connecting to the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a precious sunnah and the books like Riyadh al-Salihin were written so that people could Take the virtues of it. You don't have to wait for Shaykh Yasir to open it and read it for you. Read it yourself. Have a portion of Riyadh al-Salihin which focuses on al-Fala'il, which focuses on the virtues and things that the average Muslim can benefit from. Read the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and read his seerah and connect to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first one is listening to the words of Allah and reciting the words of Allah. The second one is Listening to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and reciting the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Listen to the third one. He says the third one. Wa ida shahidtu janaza. When I am witnessing a janaza. 
I had someone tell me last week, I prayed more janaza in one month than I prayed in my entire life. And a lot, I think at VRIC, we prayed more janaza in one month than we prayed for the existence of our entire community, it seems. All of the janazas we're witnessing. What is that doing to you? Where is your heart during those janazas? As you're witnessing and praying those janazas. He says, and, and he continues by the way. He says, فَمَا شَهِدْتُ جَنَازَةً قَطْ فَحَدَّثْتُ نَفْسِي سِوَى مَا هُوَ مَفْعُولٌ بِهَا وَمَا هِيَ صَائِرَةٌ إِلَيْهِ Every time I watch a janazah in front of me, I talk to myself. This is now self-talk. I talk to myself and I tell myself what the deceased is going through, experiencing at the moment, being carried from the hearse, the car, to in front of me. Hearing the Imam above him saying Allahu Akbar four times, knowing that he's about to go to his grave and will hear the footsteps of the people walking away. I tell myself, I tell myself from the perspective of the person that is dead, what is happening to me right now? And I start imagining I am the one being pulled and what I'm about to experience and what are my thoughts right now? What is it that I'm about to encounter? Those moments of witnessing the janazah and telling yourself, that is me. And being able to put yourself in the position of the janazah. Rather than be robotic about it. Rather than, okay, another janazah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Rather than simply missing the person. If you knew the person who is in the janazah, Ya Allah, that is me. That is me. And you start talking to yourself. I'm about to be put back in the car. I'm about to go to the grave. My, my loved ones are about to bury me under the dirt. And I'm about to be visited by the two angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're telling yourself, this is next, this is next, this is next. Dear brothers and sisters, that self-talk does something to your heart. It puts your heart in the right place. And the more you're thinking about your own janazah, the better your janazah is going to be insha'Allah ta'ala. The more you're telling yourself about the experience as you're watching someone else go through it and preparing yourself for it, لِمِثْرِ هَذَا فَعِدُّوا For this day, prepare yourselves. The more ready you will be when you are actually the one being carried out of the car. And actually the one, you've already rehearsed it. You know when they show great athletes, by the way, a great NFL quarterback or a great basketball player, they show them on the court, on the field, on the practice field, and they are rehearsing the game over and over and over and over again. How many times have you rehearsed your janazah as you watched it taking place in front of you? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of endings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to Him and make the best of our deeds the last of them and make the best of our days the day that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us amongst those who are unprepared. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are always pleased and pleasing. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawri hadha wa astaghfirullah liyu lakum wa lisa'at muslimin I personally love this video because it's just giving us a guideline of what's expected of us if we want to go to heaven. I mean, if you really want to establish a relationship with God, then be present when you want or are willing to talk to Him, create time to talk to Him, read His word and act accordingly. And those things I feel should be able to guarantee us on the right path to heaven someday um yeah let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video